In one of the longest missions, the Indian Space Research Organization successfully placed 31 satellites in two different orbits by its PSLV C-40. The success of this mission is crucial as four months earlier, ISRO's PSLV C-39 failed due to some technical issue that involved the heat shield. The rocket carried 28 foreign nanosatellites and an Indian nanosatellite. The foreign nanosatellites were from France, Finland, South Korea, Canada, UK and USA. The other two satellites were Cartosat-2 and Microsat. Cartosat-2 series satellite is known for a multispectral camera which can be used for vegetation monitoring, cloud studying and topographic mapping. India's neighbor Pakistan does not seem to be too comfortable by India's growing might in the space technology. Spokesperson of Pakistan's Foreign Affairs Ministry, Dr. Mohammad Fasal mentioned about the dual nature of such satellites and also about the build-up of destabilizing military capabilities. Pakistan may be concerned that India would be able to locate Pakistan's strategic assets through its powerful satellites and that would give India an advantage. Pakistan's own space agency, SUPARCO, which is actually the oldest space agency in the subcontinent, is far behind the Indian Space Research Organization and for at least two decades it is not expected to have indigenous satellite producing and launching capabilities. Perhaps this could be another reason why Pakistan is nervous about India's fast progress in space science. The Indian Space Research Organization already holds the record of launching 104 satellites into orbit. It has successfully placed a spacecraft called Mars Orbiter Mission in orbit around the Red Planet, and it is even planning to send a mission to Venus. ISRO's Mars mission turned out to be a massive success. It has already survived for more than 1,000 Earth days in space orbiting around the Mars, and its onboard camera has already produced more than 700 pictures. The primary objective of MOM was to design and realize a spacecraft with a capability to survive and perform Earth-bound maneuvers and reach Mars with the least amount of fuel. And the next important mission for ISRO is Chandrayaan-2, which is expected to be launched within four months. Very importantly, India has also managed entry in Vasanar arrangement and missile technology control regime, and this is supposed to open up a lot of opportunities for ISRO. It is also worth mentioning that the US, Russia and France hold almost 75% of the nearly 6 billion US dollar satellite launch industry. According to Satellite Industry Association, India has a share of just above 0.5%, China has 3%, and it appears that India is keen to change that in its favor. India is the sixth country in the world that have mastered cryogenic propulsion technology and there is hardly any other operational commercial space vehicle in the world which is similar to PSLV in its mission capabilities. It is important to note that the USA had imposed sanction on ISRO in early 1990s when it was attempting to get the cryogenic engine technology and today, American private space industry does not appear to be too comfortable with what ISRO is doing with its low-cost missions. It has already expressed its opposition to the large-scale use of ISRO's low-cost launch vehicles for American satellites, as it is difficult for the American private space industry to compete against ISRO's low-cost missions. Whether it is airlines, weather forecasting, mobile phones or maps, today our life is almost entirely dependent on the satellite technology and it is very likely that our dependence is going to increase even more. That is why there is no surprise that many defense experts predict that the next conflict between major powers could even begin in space. According to Brian Whedon of the Secure World Foundation, 
the idea of relying on space and even fighting in space was one science fiction, but now it's real. America, China and Russia are already developing techniques to safeguard their interests. India has started to take its space programs a lot more seriously as well. There is air warfare, surface warfare, undersea warfare, and space is considered as a fourth dimension of warfare. Obviously, these developments are making some countries extremely concerned. But ISRO likes to place itself a bit differently. Officially, its vision is to harness space technology for national development while pursuing space science research and planetary exploration, and its official motto looks something like this. See you again.